Every line on the underground stands out in its own way. One of the things that makes the Victoria Line unique is that every station features some tiled panels. Each station has its own design relating in some way to the location. The Victoria Line opened in 1968 with an extension to Brixton in 1971, after a long development period. It underwent many, many design permutations before the final route from Walthamstow to Brixton was settled on. One of the major reasons that it underwent so many changes in the planning stages was, basically, money. In the post-war era, there just wasn't much money available for big transport projects, especially since there was a widespread belief that cars were the future, and trains would only be used by total losers. As a result, the Victoria Line was something of a low-budget line. The stations were smaller than they really needed to be, in most cases simply being added to existing stations. Architecture was virtually non-existent, at least in terms of aesthetic interest. The decor was a cheap and dreary grey. We've come a long way from the elaborate schemes of Leslie Green and the dynamic modernism of Charles Holden. The tiles in the recesses at each Victoria Line station were the one instance of head designer Misha Black demonstrating that he actually had a soul. Oh, that sounds mean, actually. I do like Misha Black's work, but his team really did drop the ball on this one. Anyway, enough of me being unnecessarily cruel, let's talk about the tiles. Prominent artists of the era were involved in designing the tiles, some of whom had worked with Black before. I'll put a little credit for each of the artists as their tiles come up. I'm going to go south to north, as I did when filming this video. The first mural is at Brixton, and is a slightly excruciating pun. A ton of bricks. Bricks. Ton. Do you see? Stockwell's mural is a fairly abstract representation of a swan. This represents the swan, a pub across the road from the station that was originally a coaching inn. Abram Gaines and Misha Black had actually worked together on the Festival of Britain back in 1951. The arboreal theme at Vauxhall represents the pleasure gardens that, from the mid-17th century until 1859, were the area's main claim to fame. The most famous attraction in Pimlico must surely be the Tate Britain, which, when the Victoria Line was opened, was just the Tate Gallery. Inspired by this, the station is decorated with a pattern of dots in tribute to the kind of modern art that was in style in the late 60s. The station also has murals in the subway leading into the station representing various famous artists. At Victoria they went a fairly obvious route, with a portrait of Queen Victoria herself. I don't know, I just would have thought that what with it being the station the line is named after and all, they might have wanted to go for something more adventurous. Anyone else? Just me? Well then. There's more abstraction at Green Park. In this case, the abstraction represents a bird's eye view of the trees in Green Park itself. Now, Oxford Circus is quite interesting. Again, it's a fairly abstract design, but the circle represents the circus of the name. It's crossed by the three lines that serve the station. The red central line, the brown Bakerloo, and the light blue Victoria. We have another pun at Warren Street, with the maze design. You know, a maze, it's, it's sort of a warren. These days, all the underground stations incorporate a maze design, but Warren Street was doing it before it was cool. The design at Euston is the arch, or propyleum if we're going to be pedantic, that was built by the London and Birmingham Railway as the entrance to their 1837 station. This was demolished in 1962. Ironically, one of the reasons it was demolished was to make way for the Victoria Line. At King's Cross St Pancras we have what you could see as a pun, or as an abstract representation. It's a cross, made up of crowns, representing King's Cross. The real King's Cross was a crossroads, with a statue of King George IV in the middle. 
The statue was taken down in 1845 and the streets were realigned to make way for St Pancras Station in the 1860s. But the area, of course, retains the name. Highbury in Islington depicts a sort of fort or castle atop a hill. This represents the origins of Highbury. Bury, as a suffix, means a fortified place. Highbury takes its name from a manor house on the hill here. I don't know if it looked anything like this, but nevertheless, that is what the artist went with. The crossed pistols at Finsbury Park are likely an error. They represent the fact that Finsbury Park was a popular duelling site. Except that it wasn't. Finsbury Fields at Moorgate was. How embarrassing. Seven Sisters takes its name from seven trees that by tradition are planted by Seven Sisters. Therefore, the mural at Seven Sisters is another tree-based design. Incidentally, the current Seven Sisters were only planted in 1997, so they post-date the station by nearly 30 years. Tottenham Hale's mural shows the ancient ferry that used to cross the River Lee nearby. There's a fair bit of history behind that, and I keep thinking I should do a video on the subject. Well, one of these days. This rather classical Greek-looking black horse at Black Horse Lane probably doesn't need any explanation. I am, however, going to mention that there's another black horse outside the station, designed by David McFall. The final mural at Walthamstow Central is a tribute to local resident William Morris. Morris was an artist, writer and political activist who was one of the major driving forces behind the arts and crafts movement. He's perhaps most famous for his textile designs, and the tiles here are a pastiche of his style. So we reach the end of our journey. For all I dissed the Victoria line at the start, I actually do think the tiled murals are worthy of attention for their sheer variety. People, places and history are all commemorated in different ways. This might have been a dark time for design on the underground, but these add a little splash of colour, both literally and metaphorically. Well, I hope you enjoyed this ceramic tale from the tube. If you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I'd like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, as always, for their generous support of this channel. You are the colourful tiles to my grey station. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.